When it comes to establishing a successful dairy goat enterprise, selecting the right breed is a critical decision that really significantly influences milk production and overall farm profitability. Different goat breeds have distinct characteristics including milk yield, butterfat content, and adaptability to various environments. If your goal is milk, then breeding for optimal milk production is really important. In this video, we'll explore the key considerations and characteristics to help you make informed decisions when selecting a goat breed. And once the breed is chosen, which individual goat you should choose for optimal milk production. The first step is thinking through what you want in the long run. Each goat breed has different characteristics and strengths. Before delving into specific breeds, it's essential to define your goals for milk production. Are you aiming for a commercial dairy operation or supplying local markets or simply just providing for your household needs? Clearly outlining your objectives will guide you in choosing a breed that, that aligns with your production goals. Whether you're just starting or have been raising goats for years, maintaining detailed records is indispensable in a successful breeding program. Keep comprehensive data on udder confirmation and milk production and, and health history. This information not only aids in making informed breeding decisions, but but it also establishes a foundation for continuous improvement in future generations. If you want to breed the best goats in your area, who are also as productive as possible, you must start keeping good records. Get the best record keeping system out there right here. There is a link in this video. So some goat breeds are, are renowned for their impressive milk production. The Seine and the Alpine and the Nubian goats are, are really recognized as high yield dairy breeds. The Seinans in particular are known for their exceptional milk production, making them a, a popular choice for commercial dairies. But really any of the other breeds can be excellent sources of milk for your family and community. With the proper breeding and selection, even the smallest breeds can produce an astounding amount of milk. While high yield is important, the butterfat content of the milk also plays a crucial role, especially if you plan to produce cheese or other dairy products. Nigerian dwarf goats, despite their smaller size, are known for their rich milk with high butterfat content. So making them ideal for artisanal cheese production. You also want to consider the climate and environmental conditions of your location. Some breeds are, are better suited for specific climates. For instance, alpine goats are known for their adaptability to various climates, while Nubians may thrive better in warmer regions. But any breed can adapt to a new environment. It may take several generations of breeding your goats in your area to produce the hardiest possible outcome. So don't give up on what you have envisioned with your herd. Assess the, the size of your operation and the available space that you have. Larger dairy breeds like Sanins and Alpines may require more space and substantial more feeding, while the smaller breeds like the Nigerian Dwarfs are well suited for, for smaller farms or backyard setups. That's why they have become so popular in recent years. The temperament of the goat breed is also really another crucial factor, especially for those new to goats and goat farming. So tamer and more docile breeds such as La Manchas are often easier to handle, making them suitable for beginners and smaller scale operations. But again, all breeds of goats have those goats that are just what you need with a great personality and, and temperament. And on the flip side, those that you definitely want to cull and not reproduce. Just know that, that temperament is a critical factor in a successful breeding program. 
Goats with a calm and docile temperaments are, are easier to handle. They're, and that just reduces the stress during milking and management practices. A relaxed and, and cooperative temperament positively influences the overall herd dynamics and human-animal interactions. Reproductive efficiency is key for maintaining a consistent milk supply. So you'll want to research the breeding characteristics of the different breeds of goats, such as the kidding intervals and ease of kidding. So most breeds of goats will have multiple kids per pregnancy, which is really cool. But the boar goat, although not a milking goat, if not bred for mothering capabilities, can be known for their less than mothering instincts. So a goat that struggles during pregnancy, birth, and after, and or just isn't a good mother, are really ones that you probably don't want to keep around and continue breeding. You also want to consider health and disease resistance. So some breeds may be less susceptible to certain health issues, which really reduces the need for extensive veterinary care. This may come naturally to the, that breed, or it may have come about because of extensive breeding and culling. When you begin your journey, you will want to make it a point to keep the goats that have a resilience against sickness and worms. Selecting the right goat breed for milk production is, is a nuanced decision that requires careful consideration of your goals, your available resources, and your environmental conditions. But really by evaluating factors such as milk yield and butterfat content and adaptability and temperament and reproductive efficiency, you can make informed choices that, that set the foundation for a success successful and sustainable dairy growth enterprise. Whether you are aiming for a commercial operation or a small scale venture, the, the right breed can make a significant difference in the overall success of your milking endeavors. And, and really, breeding for strength and health and hardiness is essential for building a robust and resilient herd. You really do want to evaluate the overall history of your potential breeding stock. You want, to, you want to consider factors such as resistance to common diseases and adaptability to varying environmental conditions. You know, just being strong and healthy, that really will contribute to the longevity and productivity of your herd. And after you've nailed down what you like in the herd, you're ready to choose your first goats and decide which goat to add to your herd that will add the best genetics and results. The points that we were just talking about are overall great points to consider as you choose your breed. But once you've chosen that, there is a lot more to consider. So let's begin to explore what to look for in the actual goats that you're going to bring home. Now, when I brought home my first goats in milk, I didn't know what to look for in confirmation and utter attachments. At that time, I hadn't even thought of those terms. But what I did bring home were two darling does who were the perfect starter milking goats for me. If I'd been looking for the perfect teats and udders and confirmation, I probably wouldn't have gotten those two lovely girls, but I wouldn't change it for the world. They were the best way for me to get started in the goat milking world. So don't let all of this next information discourage you or overwhelm you. It's okay to get started with just a couple of goats and go from there. Figure out what you what you like and what you don't like and what you want. Get used to milking and then start to make decisions to improve your herd. In the intricate world of goat breeding, the careful selection of breeding stock really is paramount for success and sustainability of a herd. Utter characteristics and including attachment and the, the four utter conformation and the ligaments and the teats, they all play a pivotal role in determining milk production and really the overall herd health.
So let's explore the multifaceted aspects of better breeding selection, which really encompasses the udder traits and the structural conformation and the just additional factors that contribute to the development of an exceptional and resilient goat herd. The overall structure of the udder is critical when you're considering your breeding selection. A well-structured udder should be deep and capacious and symmetrical. Strong suspensory ligaments really are essential for providing support and preventing pendulousness and contributing to the longevity of the udder. You want to evaluate the medial and the lateral ligaments for robustness and resilience. A goat's overall conformation goes beyond udder traits and really encompasses the entire body structure and the balance and the correctness. Participating in a linear appraisal program provides valuable insights into the strengths and weaknesses of individual goats. Traits such as angularity and body capacity and general appearance contributes to the overall quality of the breeding stock. You want to start and choose a doe that is wide in the front end. The more depth they have in this area determines how strong they are. <laughs> she doesn't want to be in the video. <laughs> You'll also want to have, have them have a look of dariness about them. Their neck to be lean and, and their withers pronounced. And just have a look of fem femininity and refinement from the, the hip bones to the pin bones. You want this to be as flat as possible. You want it to be level. The angle will influence how well a doe kids and how, how much it drains from her reproductive tract when she does kid. And it also influences how long her udder will be and how strong the attachments are and really just also the udder depth. The, the rump width is important as well. When you're standing behind your doe, you'll want to be able to see how wide her rump is. The wider the rump, the, the easier it will be for her to kid and will be an indicator of how wide she is from front to back. It will also be a good indicator for the potential of her udder. So a wider rump is a wider udder. And these rear legs from the side view, you want the rear legs to be placed more under the body, under the body as opposed to naturally being out, uh, out more. The foundation of the productive dairy goats really lies in the udder attachment and the four udder conformation. An ideal udder attachment is high and wide, facilitating optimal milk production and minimizing strain on the udder. The four udder should blend seamlessly within the, the body wall and, uh, and avoid any abrupt transitions for optimal milk flow. There sometimes is a pocket of the udder where it attaches to the belly of the goat and has fewer lateral ligaments. You want the fore udder to be snug and strong and extend as much and as further in under the goat with no pocket at all. I really encourage you to find some pictures online and study them so that you have a picture in your mind of what you're looking for when you're deciding which goats to get. You'll, you'll be looking at the, the utter height, the arch and depth, the medial suspensory ligament and, and T placement and diameter. So I have a doe who has a small teat orifice size. That's actually delight. And she makes a lot of milk, but it is actually harder for me to milk because not as much milk comes out with each squeeze. So study and learn about all these different aspects that can affect what you're breeding into your goat herd. It, it may feel overwhelming at first, but as you get familiar with the different aspects, it will make more sense and feel more natural. Eva here has a really large udder. She makes a lot of milk. She is the sweetest goat ever. Her kids are the sweetest. This is Evie, her, her girl from two years ago, her doe from, doling from two years ago. Well, we just bred her. Um, but Eva here 
Um, although she has a, a large udder and makes a lot of milk, it is more pendulous and where it attaches to her body underneath her belly, there is a little pocket there and that isn't desirable. But I have kept her and I am keeping uh, this girl just to see what we're producing, to see if we can breed that out of her and really just to see what she produces because she is so sweet. Her temperament is wonderful and um, she's a good mother um, and there's a lot of good qualities about her but we'll see what she produces with her babies. So while color is actually a secondary consideration it can play a role in in market preferences. So it doesn't have any influence on how much milk your goat is making but you want to be breeding goats that have optimal milk production and are a desirable to the market to sell. And sometimes those flashier goats do sell better. Now let's talk about line breeding. It's a deliberate breeding practice aimed at reinforcing desirable traits within a herd. When employing line breeding, it's really, really crucial to strike a balance between preserving favorable traits and avoiding excessive inbreeding. So careful record keeping and pedigree analysis are essential tools for successful line breeding programs. So it's safe to breed a daughter to a father, a grandfather to a granddaughter, and an uncle to a niece. But stay away from breeding a full brother to a sister and a son to a mother and only begin to do this after you understand the strengths and weaknesses of your herd. If you know you have very strong bucks without any weaknesses, this can be something to begin to experiment within your own herd. You can use all of this information in this video as you begin to select your first goats or as you begin to move forward to making better decisions for which goat to add to your herd. If you own a doe that isn't strong in one area, you can choose a buck whose lineage is strong in that area and the kids from that match will most likely have an improvement in that area. As you can see, breeding for optimal milk production can be done and you can do it. The meticulous process of better breeding selection involves really a holistic approach considering not only the utter traits but also the overall confirmation, the temperament, the health, and so much more. A judicious blend of all of these factors contributes to the development of a resilient, high-performing goat herd. And through careful consideration of utter attachments and structural confirmation and additional attributes, breeders, you can advance your breeding program and really cultivate a herd that excels in both productivity and adaptability. That's a lot of information and I hope that was helpful for you as you decide which, you, which breed to choose and which goats to bring home. It's an exciting decision and I wish you all the best.